everybody. Alex, Alex, Alex. To describe John Berger as a cynic, I don't know if that's true. Everybody knows that even though on the surface he's a cynic and a curmudgeon, if you just go one, if you, even though everybody knows that John's a cynic and a curmudgeon on the surface, if you go one millimeter under the skin, he's a deeper cynic and curmudgeon. But if you go, if you go even deeper, then you find out that he's an even deeper cynic and curmudgeon until you get somewhere in the middle of him, right around the gallbladder, where you find out how kind and supportive he really is. Um, <laughs> and one person, one person who's told me how much he admires John and has learned from him uh, and benefited from his support is our next uh, performer here in the tribute, Rebecca Floor. Ever. If you want to be just like him. <laughs> I'm going to refrain from saying what I want to say right now. Because I'm doing a tribute to John, I guess. What's up, John Berger? You can do it! You shut your fucking mouth. This is my time. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a tribute to you. <laughs> shut up. You shut right up. <laughs> What a strange coincidence, she said, seeing you here. You're not stalking me, are you? <laughs> You've got quite the opinion of yourself, I answered, believing that I'm here in any way or shape or form because of you. I mean, you're right, of course, I continued. How could you not be? You are the reason I wake in the evening and sleep into dawn. You are the music in my coffee and the milk in my tree. You're the kind of girl that inspires me in all things legal, carnal, and otherwise. I am here solely because I thought there was a chance, a possibility, a slim opportunity that I might be able to see you and talk to you, to have your smile rest upon my eyes. I can only think that those dark ladies I pray to when you are not around, that they have fulfilled my wish. You're pretty full of yourself, though, to think all that. She laughed nervously <laughs> and walked off, prepared to hide her ego better in the future while I swore to myself to be less honest next time. <laughs> that was about me. <laughs> this one is actually about me. It's called Florentine Assassin. <laughs> I love this film. <laughs> When I killed you and tore you apart, when I killed you and sliced out your heart, when I killed you and fried up the bits, first I ate you, then went to defecate. When I killed you because you were mean, and then cut off the fat from the lean, I fried up some portions just because I could, and then when I chewed you, you tasted quite delicious, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I'm not bad in the chef department. When I killed you to make my next meal, I didn't use poison, it has no appeal. I opted for bludgeons and knife work instead, and didn't let up until you were comatose, and soon after, expired, slaughtered, murdered, killed. <laughs> when I killed you, I had no regret, but some days have passed, and now in my head are feelings that weren't considered before, like, now that I've killed you, I can't kill you anymore. <laughs> this is um, indirect. Uh, oh, I'm not even going to say the words, but um, there was a conversation that happened on FC. Uh, no. That, uh, Are you that, uh, no, you should. <laughs> uh. Uh, I think you'll appreciate this, John. This is from uh, August 20th, 2012. Do I have anything new? Do I have any new poems to read you tonight? What the fuck? What's wrong with the old stuff? What is going on in your life that you can't bear a moment's repetition of an evening of redundancy? What must I do to satisfy you? How much content need I, content need I produce to get you off my back, off my ass, out of my life? Fuck. Do I have anything new? New? For you? Yeah. I might be able to throw some things together. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, you like that, John? You wrote that. You think you wrote that, right? One more. One more? Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, I have to pick. Aw. 
Okay, so I'll pick something. Scrap more. Okay, I'm just, can I, do, okay, I'm gonna scrap this. This one's really short and then I'll do, because I really like this one. It was written on my birthday. Shut up. <laughs> I love you. I didn't say anything. You keep looking at your phone like something's gonna change. Nothing's gonna change. Nobody is calling you. Nobody is texting you. Nobody is facing your book or spacing your mind or twitting or grinding you. You aren't being texted or sexted or even hexed by anyone at all. No one wants to talk to you. Nobody cares. You are alone in the world with me here and you are ignoring me, which makes it a wonder that I am willing to pay attention to you at all. You're lucky to have me, even though you don't really deserve me. I feel like I should have wrote that. <laughs> Great. All right, this is my last one. This one was written on my birthday in 2011. When I was seven years old. Yeah. <laughs> and it's actually like a good poem, so I'm really excited about reading it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, po <laughs> the police found him, such as he was, in an abandoned corpse of a car, in hand me down jeans, and a look of shock on the rest of his face. He had, we learned, being, been daring more month after month for very many. He would wait well past dark until we all had found our separate dreams before he went to follow his. His diary uncovered incessant adventures as he dived into the deep in searching for sharks. And he found them, predators with rows of teeth, that chose to gnaw instead of bite until eventually he found a chicken hawk. It was all there in a diary, in a room, right next to mine. His cupboard leaning on our shared wall. Nothing needed to be decoded. His words were clear. His eyes were wide as he described what he wanted. And even when we were blind, no. We were blinded by our own hands, refusing to see what his classmates saw, what the night was witnessed with his enemies, what his enemies hated him for. He could have told us, he should have told us, that we were glad to ignore his truth. So long as I didn't have to be told I was fine, but if I'd know, he might still be next door in his room. He could still be writing in his journal, sharing secrets we refused to hear. Thanks. Our flow. Woo! All right, next up, the man, Benjamin Krieger. This is a John Berger tribute, so I'm not gonna say anything nice about John Berger, <laughs> because that wouldn't be very John Berger-ish. He usually does that about himself. And I'm also gonna read from a phone. Yeah. We all know John Berger's a purist, so all you people who read from paper, I don't know what you were thinking. <laughs> I, I will say this. Uh, I know that, you know, on iPhones, when you're, when you're reading on the, at least the way my, <laughs> The way my iPhone is set up, set up, you uh, you can like see like the first line of what someone's writing, and then it it blends their signature in there at the same. So you kind of see them both, kind of like previewed, and and so it never catches me, it never fails to surprise me and catch me off guard that like I see John's signature on there, and I think he's telling me, you know. Okay, Ben, sounds good. See you at Sidewalk. Do you know that John Berger's writing poems? Yes, I know you're fucking writing poems. <laughs> sounds good. I'll get that to you for the festival. Do you know that John Berger's writing poems? Fuck yes! Jeez, why does he keep asking me this question? Anyway, there was only one poem of John's that I wanted to read when I knew this was a tribute. Unfortunately, it was not one of his best poems. So I asked him to rewrite it for me, and he did. So and embellish it. Please forgive me uh, for what I'm about to do. It's not going to be good. I 
may be insulting and difficult and some of the things I utter may call into question certain important societal precepts that you would rather not consider. I, it will be awful. Uh, no matter how much you prepare, you will not be able to anticipate the damage I am about to do. Uh, still, for all we've been, all we could still promise to be, I beg that you will in advance promise that you will be okay with what is to come and that I will be forgiven and that you will stay. What do you say? Right. <laughs> Doctor! Doctor, you have to help me. Yeah. No. I can't stop talking about preteen girls licking sticks. <laughs> every day, in every way, I obsess over the images of children, young, Younger, youngest, <laughs> all sucking pixies, sugar melting in mouth, never resting until they're emptied out, and they're hyper running, skirts swirling about. I think of nothing else, dream only of these twisted desires, fantasize about these objects of fire, these short-lived flirty nubile vamps straining the cane, mainlining that white stuff. Dear God, good doctor, you have to help me. There is nothing else I can do with my days and nights. No matter how I try to fight it, I can only devote my time to the delight in it, the thought of preteen girls with sugar sticks. <laughs> well, other things do occasionally cross my rabid mind. Sometimes I dream of carloads of sweet, underaged innocents driving down US 322 in Pennsylvania on their way to some sugary theme <laughs> park. <laughs> <laughs> where they'll play and gamble and careen all day with their excited flushed faces as they race excitedly down the highway. <laughs> Anticipating all the challenges to come. But then I regained focus and fantasized fingers grasping <laughs> opening them up for all they have to offer. These thoughts, they dominate me, doctor, and I need your help to resolve, to resolve my despair. So I thought I'd start by clearing the air and tell you that I have a basement filled with candy goods. Now, help me, doctor, and let me know. Do you know any... <laughs> children <laughs> possibly invite over I, I, I think you need to understand uh, certain things about what just transpired the words I said the thoughts I conveyed the concepts uh, innuendo well they weren't mine uh, they were simply thoughts I found in a random book uh, an errant broadcast a poem some irresponsible asshole uh, asshole once let loose it wasn't me. I didn't do it. It was mind control. It was a spell of black oil, temporary insanity, a parasitic growth that forced me to do what I would never do under normal circumstances. Even consider I was playing a part, a mere actor, and certainly not the writer or the director of this terrible melodrama. I am not responsible. I was merely a conduit. It wasn't me who said that thing or did it or thought it. Please, I'll just let myself out now. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, I'm going to make a magical transformation now. <gasps> Woo! I am now Myra the Magnificent. I am now Herb Cher. And, uh, yeah, I was trying to think of some good John Berger stories. Um, John uh, and I have had a lot of, lot of adventures. There was a time we 
uh, well, John graciously drove me an hour out to Queens. And we bought 600 decks of playing cards and loaded them back into his into the, into his trunk. And it, for some reason, it felt very illicit, like you know, in the middle of Queens, loading stuff into a trunk. Trunk, but it wasn't. We were just buying lots of playing cards. And um, another time, uh, Barry and John and I decided that we were going to form. I don't know. I like to think of it as an antique company but we were just going to the flea market together so the car all the stories with john involved schlepping the car was loaded up with stuff and we pull up and for some reason this the road was was blocked off why was it closed that day do you remember uh uh a uh, security thing or i don't yeah, know there was, a, there was a parade of some sort right so so we were trying to get to the flea market where we had to drop off all the stuff and there was like a whatever a parade and this like cop was there like saying no you have to go around and he was actually a very pleasant cop as far as cops go he was a young guy and john for some reason decided that this was the cop he was going to choose to confront and give shit to it was like the only nice cop in all of new york and then i could see the steam re level rising in john like this you know and i was trying to do whatever i could to diffuse it but i couldn't think fast enough and i would go John is trying to help us, and John would go, be quiet. And then, he, and then finally, John basically told the cop like to fuck off, essentially. I mean, not in those words. And the cop, and the cop was like still being very nice. And I, and I was going, John, stop. And John just like totally lost his stack, and he like, uh, and he like started. The only time he's ever screamed at me was like, shut the fuck up. And then he turned to the cop and finally realized he was being an idiot. He goes, an idiot, and he goes. Uh, officer, what can we do now? You know, I mean, it was like, <laughs> what can we do now to rectify this situation? And finally, the officer was very nice and he let us through. Um, and um, the Great one. Great story, it takes me well. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a really good story. <laughs> uh, no, no, don't worry. You know, I mean, don't worry. You know, no, it's, it, we're telling the truth here, John. I'm not trying to like, misrepresent you. Oh. Um, um, so, um, uh, um, oh, yeah, so. So uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to speed this up, but I'm not good at that. Um, so I started coming here in August of 2004. My brother got married in July of 2004 in Champaign, Illinois, and I of course went to the wedding, as one would to his brother's wedding. And um, you know, great wedding and all of that. We had a great time. I came back, and um, later on, my brother and sister-in-law were going to be visiting New York, and my sister-in-law said to me. By the way, um, I think John Berger hangs out at Sidewalk Cafe. And I said, yeah, he does. You know John Berger? She goes, yeah, you met him. You were sitting at the same table as him at our, at our wedding <laughs> a few months ago. So there's this picture of John and I together at my uh, brother and sister-in-law's wedding, like on opposite sides of the table. We didn't know each other, didn't speak to each other, and then met each other soon after that at Sidewalk Cafe. <laughs> and the final story that I'll mention is that the, one of the very first times I came here, I can't remember when, it was, uh, if it was the first time or the second time, whatever, but So Say the Elemental Wizard was performing. And So Say, this is good, remember this back in 2004, So Say introduced himself as a Jewish, a gay Jewish rapper. And at that time, there weren't a lot of gay Jewish rappers around, you know, back in 2004. And, and he was wearing like a button down white shirt. I did, it was very like contradictory to my image of rappers at the time. And so Sose Lanter, the wizard, was standing right here and he started rapping. And right over here was a guy uh, uh, dancing like this. <laughs> and it's that guy who was sitting in the back there uh, dancing in a herky jerky motion. And I thought, I'm going to be coming to this place the rest of my life. I think like, this is the kind of stuff that goes on there. And then eventually, um, I wrote this song. Um, and uh, it, John, are you able to participate in this tonight? I don't know if I Maybe should. should. <laughs> so this is a dance oh, number. Yeah. I used to say that John was the dance captain of our of our act, and that's why I wrote this song. And um, this will wrap up the tribute to John Berger tonight. Dance to. It is a dance tune, and it was inspired by John Berger's uh, dancing here at Sidewalk. You did the monkey and you did the frog. You did the twist and you did the shrug. But now it seems those dancers are through. So here's another dance you can do, I said. Do the burger, do, do the burger. Do the burger, do, do the burger. Do the burger, do, do the burger. The burger, do, do the burger. Shake your hips and shake your thighs. Eat somebody else's fries. Do the burger with me. Yeah. 7.30 on a Monday night. And on the stage is an amazing sight. The 
roundest man that you've ever seen is passing out his magazine. I said, to the burger, to, to the burger, 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 to, to the burger. Shake your hips and shake your thighs, eat somebody else's fries. To the burger with me, let's go now. <laughs> Street. He stops and talks to everyone he meets. On the stage, he'll read a poem or two. And he will say that he wrote it for you. I say, do the burger, 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 That's the John Berger tribute, everybody. This is the winner of I Vote Festival.